get the same old thing. One analyst after the next. Things look good. The economy's finally on a sustainable recovery. Central banks won't let it go down. Yes, the Fed may be tapering, but they have to stimulate more they can. Most people still see the markets going up after it has had a clear, and I mean crystal clear, bubble trajectory, especially since 2013, but all the way back to the bottom in 2009. This bubble lays exactly over the late 94 to early 2000 bubble if you look at the Dow and S&P. And people say it's not a bubble. Here's the thing, though. Not only do bubbles always burst, and they always burst, and when they burst, they don't correct, they crash and go down twice as fast as they went up, and they're going up rapidly because they're a bubble. I still look at the fundamentals, and I always look around the corner, and there's three things I see that are going to hit in the next year that nobody's going to expect. Number one, in the U.S., yes, the average person peaked in 2007, it's spending at age 46, just as we predicted for 20 years prior, and we started to go in, in this slow trend. And that's why it's taking so much stimulus just to grow at a mere paltry 2%. And Europe can't even do that. What's going to happen by early 2015 and probably sooner, there's a second cliff. The affluent people, the top 1% to 20%. And the top 20% control over 50% of spending. The top 1% control 50% of financial assets and net worth in this country. They are still spending because they peak later. They go to school longer, and then their kids go to long school longer. The economy, after peaking at 46, continues to move more sideways, especially with car buying, into age 53. Well, guess what age 53 peaks? This year, 2014, for the baby boomers. The important point is although spending peaks at 46 and starts to slow or flatten, it drops strongly and for the rest of our lives from age 54 on. That is 2015 for a long time ahead. So I call it the affluent demographic cliff or the second demographic cliff. The U.S. economy is going to surprisingly weaken late this year or early next year and no amount of stimulus is going to be in reverse it because only the wealthy people are now spending, partly because they're still in this upward cycle, but also because the Fed, by goosing financial assets with this bubble, has benefited them. Homer Simpson doesn't have much money in the stock market or 401k plan. These people have tons of money in financial assets, so they feel richer than ever. Second, Germany, who's supposed to hold up Europe they're the largest economy in Europe, the most financially sound. They've been funding more than anybody the bailouts and have had to fund them for the ECB to do it. And the Germans don't even want to fund them, but they have to because the whole system will go down, just like the U.S., without bailing out the banks and bailing out major companies in, 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 in constant stimulus. Germany has the worst demographic trends especially in the next eight years, starting in 2014 into 2022, but then even forever, they have almost no echo boom. But in the next decade, Germany is going to severely disappoint. Germany's drop-off in demographic trends, note this, is even steeper than Japan's was in the 1990s. And the only reason I was able to forecast an unprecedented boom in Europe and the U.S. and most of the world, while Japan crashed in the late 80s for the 90s, was because I saw this demographic shift, and it was radical. Japan echo boom, the Japan baby boom peaked way ahead of the U.S. and Europe. And Europe peaks next. The Europe doesn't see its biggest fallout until 2014 forward and then more and more countries. But watch Germany. Germany already disappointed recently out of the nowhere showing a minus 0.1.9% decline in their manufacturing sector. You're going to see more of this in the years to come. How is Germany going to keep supporting the bailouts in the ECB and the Eurozone if their economy is now slowing even faster than others? Europe is not turning around, especially when you look at bad bank loans, which are now rising rapidly in Italy after Greece and Portugal and Spain. The fundamental level, things aren't turning around in Europe. Everybody says they are. Third and biggest factor, which I know you've heard me talk about, China, China, China. Greatest bubble in history. 
China has pushed urbanization, overbuilding of factories. If, if we're printing money, they're printing condos, 27% vacant and still building more, 40% excess capacity in most industries, still building more. They're, they're keeping the economy going by building stuff for nobody. And things are starting to crack. Their shadow banking system has continued to funding housing expansion way above vacancies even when the government's been trying to crack down. The government keeps funding industrial and infrastructure expansion that they don't need. Bridges and railroad stations and steel factories and cement factories for nobody. China's bubble is showing signs of cracking. The biggest real estate developers are discounting for the first time up to 40%, killing all the rich Chinese investors that bought those condos just ahead of them much higher, and, and they are screaming. You're not supposed to do that. The richest family in China, Ka Li Xing, Li Ka Xing, I mean, 30 billion plus net worth, just sold 3 billion in their commercial properties and selling more. The smart money is realizing there's a bubble in real estate, more and more families, and I've been over to Australia and other places lecturing in, in Vancouver as well as here. The rich Chinese are fleeing their excuses. They're taking their children to an English-speaking country. They're taking them to LA or, 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 or Vancouver or London or Sydney or Melbourne or Singapore to get an English-speaking education. What they're really doing is, tr is parking their money in real estate and getting their money out of their country because they're scared of the bubble bursting, they're scared of being taxed to death, they're scared of restrictions on them getting out of the country in the future. So again, the smart money is saying this is over. There was a 60 Minutes interview about a year ago, and I've never seen this in the real estate industry. The largest real estate developer there, and therefore the largest in the world, stood in front of the camera and said, this is a bubble. Not, are we, not only are we building way more condos than are needed, we're building more expensive condos than that people can afford. The same thing we're saying, the highest price to, to income ratios in the world is not in New York, is not in London, it's not even in Singapore or Mumbai, it's in the largest cities in China. So China is showing signs of developers failing, bonds starting to default, the government's covering these up and, you know, plugging the dikes just like everybody's been doing. The China's bubble is so big, and it's not about a subprime bubble and people borrowing at subprime rates and defaulting. People there put down a lot of cash, but the thing is the Chinese save 50% on average, 65 to 70% for the richest people, and they plow an unprecedented amount of that in real estate, not in stocks and bonds. They're either in real estate or cash. And when real estate implodes and it's already starting to weaken, they're going to see their wealth implode. They're going to stop feeling wealthy. They're going to stop buying real estate there and around the world, driving up cities, and they're going to slow down in their spending in the top 60% there control 85% of the real estate and financial assets and their 60% of the income and probably 50% of the spending. Much more difference between rich and poor in China. So the biggest surprise over the next year or so is going to be the China bubble finally burst and let me see how much money the ECB and the Fed or Japan can print. To, to reverse the effects of that? The answer is they're not going to be able to reverse that effect, and it's going to cause real estate that's bubbling everywhere to be questioned. Stocks go up and down together. Real estate's more like a popcorn popper. You know, it pops in the U.S., you know, and then it pops in Japan, then it pops in the U.S., and it pops in Ireland, it pops in Spain, and then other places. When there's enough bu bubbles pop, more of them will pop more rapidly. Investors still think real estate can't go down and that the bubbles have burst are unique. They're not unique. All financial bubbles are going to burst in the next six years when all of our key cycles point down and real estate is going to burst as well. And when the China bubble burst, it's going to be the final nail to this global bubble and this endless stimulus that thinks if you just keep the bubble going long enough, we'll escape, we'll reach escape velocity. Europe's going down next year, the U.S. going down next year, China's going down next year. I don't think governments can stimulate, they'll try, enough to combat that. And the Fed is tapering, coming into this 
decline, second major decline in demographics in the U.S. They don't see this coming because they don't understand demographics. They didn't see the 2008 slowdown and subprime crisis coming. They're not going to see this wealthy cliff in demographics coming. And those are the only people still spending, and they're taking away the punch bowl. So look out in the next year. This is a time to be selling stocks at new highs. Don't get greedy. Take your gains on every rally. Way more downside than upside, and I think we're very close to this bubble peaking. Thanks for listening.